<laughs> it seems like everybody answered and the timer's still like going. Um, so that, so deep breathing reduces your heart rate, improves blood flow and reduces anxiety. So since we have 24 seconds left, I wanna, um, I want to just uh, do a very quick tutorial how to take a deep breath. Usually you want to put your hand on your chest, your other hand on your belly. You inhale for three seconds and exhale for three. But when you exhale, you want to kind of pretend you're blowing out of a straw. So you kind of pucker your lips a little bit. And your hands are placed on your chest and your belly just so you could feel the inhale and the exhale. So the answer is true. Wow, Martha, is anybody else going to try to beat her to it? Positive affirmations are statements that when repeated can result in positive behaviors. True or false? The answer is true. So the more we repeat positive statements to ourselves, the more we believe them and then the more we act on that. Nice, Christine, you're taking the lead. Two more questions, guys. Which of the following is not a benefit of listening to music? Which is not a benefit of listening to music? And our answer is, sorry guys, it actually does improve, um, decreases your, your pain, which I'm surprised not a lot of people know about that, but listening to music um, does reduce uh, pain um, and it's used for pain management a lot. There's a lot of studies that show that music does uh, decrease the pain. Now, I'm sorry to say that listening to music will not make you a good dancer. I mean, I've tried it, I listen to tons of music and I still, I am not that great. So um, studies don't show that. They actually show that it reduces stress, improves your mood and uh, decreases pain. All right, here we go. True or false, both dark chocolate and exercise produce endorphins, the hormone that improves our mood. True or false, can chocolate make us, put us in a good mood? What do you guys think? Is it the same exercise and dark chocolate? Do they have the same effect? You guys are quick. And our answer is true. Now, this doesn't mean that you can put off exercise and just eat dark chocolate because dark chocolate costs money and exercise is completely free and easily accessible. Very good. Last one, guys. Which of the following is a great way to improve student mental health? Is it a balanced diet? Good sleeping habits, increased physical activity, or all of the above. What do you guys think? What can help improve a student's mental health? Is it all of the above? Is it a balanced diet? That is true. All of the following uh, help improve our mental health. So you guys ready to see the winner? Let's see. Brandon got third place, congratulations. Joanna, second place, and our winner is Kristen, congratulations. Kristen, you can come and pick this up from Jonah's office. You're gonna have to meet with the principal before you can get this, sorry. <laughs> Oh no. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I was closing all the tabs and I'm like, everybody got quiet. So I kind of freaked out for a second. Um, yes, please share your full email on the chat so we can get in contact with you and share uh, and make sure you get your prize. Congratulations. Um, and now, uh, just in time, uh, I'm going to let Ruthie present uh, very briefly, just share with us the song that she's going to um, be sharing with you guys. So, Ruthie, can you? Please introduce your song for us. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm, we're going to be presenting uh, the song called um, Amazing Race. Now, this is, I know, a very, very special song to a lot of people. And I know that in these difficult times, it really just brings a little bit of calmness to sometimes our aching souls. So, um, I, I really do hope that you enjoy this this collaboration that I did with a coworker of mine um, that we did especially for this event. When Evelyn told me about it, I, I was really like thinking about which song I should perform for you guys. And so they actually guided me and I think you guys are really gonna like this. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Uh, Mr. Elvis, would you please um, perform it and then maybe yeah, raise the volume so we could all hear it? Okay, I can't hear the song. I don't know if anybody else can. Yeah, no volume is coming through. No, I can't either. Okay, while we set this up, um, I want to just remind everybody, uh, Ruthie and uh, her fellow artists, uh, they did this rendition specially for the Wellness Fair, uh, all the way from Mexico, just for you guys. So, uh, I'm so excited that they took the time to do this just for you guys. So, I really hope you guys enjoy it as well. All right, let me try again. Let me know. Hi, I'm Ruth Young. And I am Cesar And we are going to be singing Amazing Race. We could hear now. One, two, three. Amazing Race.
Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ruthie. And please thank Cesar for doing this special rendition for us. Um, like I mentioned, uh, they uh, filmed this and, and practiced and did this rendition specially for the wellness fair. So we're so honored uh, that you guys took the time to do this for us. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to now pass the mic to Mr. Alvarez. All right. All right. Um, and Ruthie and Cesar, thank you so much for this performance. And I just want to uh, make uh, something clear. I, I was joking earlier about um, payment. So Ruthie, sorry, there's no check coming for you. Every single presenter here is a volunteer. So I, we have to really, really show gratitude. And please, everyone in the chat, comment on Ruthie. I know she's an up and coming performer and she's going to go places. And any support that you can give her by liking her on Instagram or on her social media, please do that because she's a great musician along with Caesar. And I know uh, from the bottom of our hearts that, you know, that they're going to do really, really great and they're going to go places. So please show them some love, some, show them some support on the chat. Uh, and I know that Ruthie and Evelyn are going to uh, share with us how they can get in touch too in case you want to connect with them. Um, also, uh, again, there is no payment coming. On behalf of our school, our students, and our district, and especially from the now Assembly Majority Leader of the State uh, Assembly from the 44th District, I'm sorry, 47th District, and also an alumni of Colton High School, uh, Caesar, Evelyn, and Ruth, thank you. Um, and you'll be getting these certificates in the mail, so we'll be reaching out to you to see how uh, we can get those to you. Uh, but you have this certificate. Uh, to kind of mark this event and to show some gratitude on our behalf for the work that you have done to bring this to our students. So thank you so much, everyone. Yay. Um, now, um, if we have uh, Georgina still with us, uh, one of our uh, members of our club, uh, I'm going to ask Georgina to introduce our next uh, session. Georgina, are you still with us? Yes. All right, go ahead, take it away. Okay, now I'd like to welcome Denise Herrera, an elementary school counselor for session number two, relaxation exercises. Awesome, thank you. Um, hello, welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and if possible, um, share my screen. Or do I have to share it with you? No, I just need to stop being the presenter right now. And obviously, oh. I like to get the spotlight. So let me let me pass pass it on to you. All right. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, everybody. So thank you for being here, um, and allowing us to go through and show you some um, practices, techniques, and tools for relaxation um, and mindfulness. And just keep in mind, everything that I do go through and show you today, I am a practitioner of everything that I share with you. And the reason that I specifically um, am very passionate about this is because as I was growing up, especially being in middle, in middle school and in high school, I did have my own um, mental health challenges, inclusive of depression and anxiety. But unlike you, um, I didn't I didn't have anyone to show me and to help me gain these coping skills and tools. So I'm really hoping that I can impart something to you today that you will be able to practice and use in your daily lives. So um, in this picture, you can see two images you see, well, one, but you see a person. And then if you look at what they're looking at on the left, their mind is filled with like concerns, um, you know, just in general, what's gonna happen with school, with work, with home, their car, can they pay rent? Um, is there gonna be food on the table? These are some, um, you know, things that can fill our mind. So your mind can be full, but it could be full of anxiety and stressors. Now, if you look at what the little dog is thinking, they are in the moment. They are present exactly where they are at. So there's a large difference between the word mindful or mindful. 
And we want to focus on the, the image on the right where the puppy is kind of in the moment present. So I'm going to teach you a little bit more about that. But before I do that, I thought it'd be important to figure out, well, when might I need some of these relaxation techniques? Like, what clues does my body or my mind give me? So um, I want you to start to really tune in and learn to listen to your body as it's physically giving you clues that you may be encountering stress, depression, anxiety, or just, you know, maybe it's just a bad day. So I want you to take your time to imagine or think back to a moment where you were feeling some sort of stress, maybe during a test, during, some of us are starting to learn to drive, my high schoolers, like that, the driver's test. I know that caused me anxiety. Um, meeting new people can cause us um, stress or anxiety. So think of the time that you were concerned, worried, or stressed. And go back and think about how your body was feeling at that time. So sometimes when we are having stress or anxiety, we might be frequently plagued with headaches or migraines. Um, your jaw, so sometimes this is some a clue that you, people don't really notice, but your jaw, it clenches sometimes, it's tight, and you might end up sleeping that way. And so when you wake up, you wake up with a headache. And I put that as the first thing because this is something that I still struggle with today. There's mornings I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, what did I just do? And I realize my teeth start to hurt too. And I'm like, oh, I probably was, you know, anxious or concerned and I was clenching my jaw as I was sleeping. This happens to a lot of people. This doesn't happen to me, but some people actually grind their teeth. And if it's really bad, you may end up sleeping with like a, a mouth, like a retainer to keep your teeth from grinding at night. Tremors or trembling of your lips, your hands, your eyebrows. When I was in high school of going to college, I was super stressed not just because I was headed into college, but also because I was having some concerns with my family and it just added up all of my stress. And so I started having this like tick on my lip where it was un uncontrollably moving. And again, that was due to stress, but that was my body letting me you know, hey, you need to handle it. If your neck hurts, your back, that's a pretty common one. Um, if your muscles start to hurt, um, sometimes you feel lightheaded or like you're gonna faint. Oh, this is another very common when your hands are cold or sweaty, clammy, especially like if you have to do a public presentation and you feel very uncomfortable with it. I think that's like the number one symptom. Um, difficulty sleeping. Sometimes you can overeat or undereat. My brother is one of those people that overeats. He'll like open up the cabinet and he's like eating everything and he's like, oh my God, help me. And I'm just like, no, nah, you got to deal with that. <laughs> I can't help you with that one. Um, or this one does happen to be being very forgetful or what may seem disorganized, but it's just that you're expressing your inner emotions also kind of wants around you. So you have things maybe placed everywhere um, and you don't intentionally, intentionally need to be disorganized or you know have your stuff everywhere, but it can happen. Now I wanna tackle one more um, concern, which is just focusing on stress and how this, how stress affects your brain. So we talked about the physical symptoms. Now I wanna talk about stress in the brain because if you're able to really understand what's happening, I think you're gonna be able to then utilize that to stop and take a minute to, to do something different about it. So let's hope that this video works. And as it loads, I'm gonna pause it so. It's like a really short video, it's maybe like two minutes or so, and then we'll get into the tools and techniques of, of, of relaxation.
This reaction goes back millions of years to our distant animal ancestors. Animals whose mutilae were more sensitive to danger were more likely to stay alive and also injured. Over millions of generations, this developed into the species we all know as anxiety. So you see, anxiety itself is not all bad. But when there is no immediate life or death threat, and your amygdala is telling your body that you're in danger, that's when anxiety becomes a problem. Your amygdala doesn't know the difference between getting and public speaking or failing a test. Human society has only existed for a relatively short time. Messy and complicated and confusing. And our amygdala just haven't had time to catch up. So sometimes, when we're in uncomfortable situations, our brain can freeze it and overreact. Our heart beats faster and we breathe heavily, pulling more oxygen into our body. The muscles in our arms and legs tense up and fill with blood. Our skin perspires to pull us down. This would all be great if we needed to fight or run, but instead, we just feel tense and sweaty. Sometimes our minds go blank and we feel like we can move or talk. That would be great if we needed to hide. Instead, we just feel stuck. When things trigger our anxiety, sometimes we try to avoid them like our ancestors avoiding a predator. But that can cause problems when those triggers are important parts of life, like going to school or meeting new people, things that won't just give up and go away. So how does learning all this help? Well, it starts with remembering what's really going on. There's nothing physically wrong with you. It's just your amygdala trying to tell you it thinks you're in danger, even if it gets confused about how much danger you really in. Understanding why we feel anxiety is an important step in learning to manage it. So if, if that video didn't show well, I'll go ahead and link it in the chat so that you can watch it. And I'll put it there right now, but so that you can watch it another time. And what I like about YouTube is that as it kind of shows through, you get other um, videos that are similar, so um, you can learn a little bit more. But basically, that fight or flight response that our bodies naturally have is sometimes what causes the stress and anxiety. So being aware that, hey, I'm not in danger when I'm taking a test, right? It's just my body reacting to it, really lets us start to think about what techniques and tools we could use to help us. So. Relaxation in general, are um, it's a great way to help you move through the stress. And it's not just about becoming more peaceful or centered, but um, it can also just kind of be a practice, which is something that you do on a daily basis. Um, but what it's intended to do is to decrease the effects of stress that are happening in your mind and body. We usually call these coping tools or techniques. And for most of you, you may have heard of some of these already, such as like deep breathing. Um, and in some, what I'm going to do next in a few is I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques that are my favorite, including guided mediation, mindfulness, and listening through silence in order to help still our mind and body. But there's several relaxation tools. I'm just covering a couple. So the first one I want to talk about is mindfulness. What is that? Remember the image at the very beginning. Um, so we want to, to our minds to be more clear like and present like the image of the puppy. So mindfulness means that you're maintaining a moment by moment awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, and your body sensations. This may also include what's around you in the environment. So when you are practicing mindfulness, I try to encourage it to be in a calm and relaxing environment or ambiance, we don't always have that luxury. But if you happen to have a space in your home, whether outside, or even put like headphones on with relaxing music, it can help you channel in that awareness and focus. Um, mindfulness also involves you accepting whatever it is that you're feeling at the moment. It may be accepting that you're feeling angry. It may be accepting that we're feeling concerned worried or disappointed but whatever it is you feel you're not judging it you're not saying oh i shouldn't feel this i shouldn't feel that you're just kind of accepting hey this is where i'm at this is what i'm feeling 
and you're going to allow that to pass through. The benefits of using mindfulness, and mind you, this is a practice, so you practice doing this whenever you can, is that it improves your well being, it helps you focus attention, um, and it can help with depression and anxiety. Um, it also will help you relieve stress. Sometimes it can help you with pain because there is a lot of breathing um, components that go with it. And one that's not known is because another stress stressor sometimes, or when I was younger with little children, they start to have like stomach aches. Like that's one of the big major ones for younger students or younger children. So it can help with um, alleviate those upset tummies. And I clearly don't know how to self focus. <laughs> if you could see that on my slide. <laughs> All right, so here are some of the techniques, okay? Um, you can do four, seven, eight breathing, which is something that I heard someone else earlier talk about. So you basically take a deep breath for four seconds, you hold all this air in your lungs for seven, and then you exhale through your mouth for eight seconds. So I'm just gonna leave that there. We're not gonna do it at this moment. You can do notice five things. It's just if you're in the um, like space where you're trying to ground and calm yourself, notice things that are around you and kind of do some deep breathing and go from there. Yoga, yoga is a big thing that I love to practice. And you know what? If you don't know how to do yoga, that's okay because all of you, all of my students have Chromebooks, right? You can just Google um, yoga for beginners or yoga stretches and there you will find an instructor that can give you a 15, 30 minute little session on yoga. Um, last week I was super stressed and I was like, oh, I need to do something to let the stress out. So I, that's exactly what I did. And I did yoga for 20 minutes and I felt so much better just by doing gentle stretching. Um, silent uh, meditation where you're just kind of sitting in silence and really thinking about where you're at, being present, going through your mind and your feelings and again, accepting and letting go. Uh, what we're going to do today is guided imagery and another piece that we're going to do today is listening for silence. You do have other things on here like coloring, grounding, positive affirmations or so speaking well about yourself and one of my favorites, aromatherapy. I have things, candles, those like Bath and Body Works plug-ins, like whatever you can find that actually are very, very helpful. I'm a really big person on scents and smells. So a scent of lavender, of rose, is very calming to me. So I might use that to help me relax. So the first piece I want to do with you guys is a guided imagery experience. So what you can do for this piece is pretty much sit where you're at, but I want you to relax. Like, I don't know where you all are, but the goal of this is for you to trust me. I'm going to be reading something I specifically wrote for this. So what I would like you to do is wherever you're at, find a comfortable space, whether it's your chair, the couch, your room, your bed. And if you're at home, like my students, feel free to move somewhere else if you'd like. You don't need to look at the screen. All you need to do is be able to listen to my voice. What I'm going to go ahead and do is read this out loud, and I want you to um, imagine and follow what I'm saying, okay? So I invite you at this time to go ahead and close your eyes if you feel comfortable, and allow your body to just sink in and to relax wherever you're at. So I want you to take the time to gently Sit or sink into your seat. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Allow your body and your arms to gently drop to your side. Allow your legs to be still and lay in a comfortable position. Ease the muscles in your neck, your jaw, face, 
and shoulders. Take a deep breath in. And slowly exhale. Focus on the sensations of your body and allow your body and mind to rest freely in this position. Inhale deeply. Exhale gently through the nose. Feeling your lungs inflate and slowly deflate with pure and clean oxygen. Sorry friends, do you know this I forgot one piece. Take a deep breath in and out. In your mind's eye, imagine yourself standing at the side at the top of a mountain. You smell the crisp, clean fragrance of the pine trees that surround you. You see the giant, tall, green pine trees standing beside you. You draw your attention to the soft chirping of small birds in the distance. This area near the mountainside is completely peaceful. Take a deep breath in and out. There is nothing for you to be concerned with. There is a gentle breeze that brings a calming whisper to the branches of the tall pine trees. As you look in the direction of the edge of the mountain, you are greeted by a gentle rising sun. Kindly meandering through the trees. Take a deep breath in and out. The sun kisses your skin and gives you a beautiful sense of warmth, love, and inner joy in your heart. You slowly walk closer towards the beaming sun, which caresses your face, bringing a smile of joy. Take a deep breath in and out. Today, you will be triumphant. Display courage and strength. Your generosity and resilience do not go unseen. You are worthy. And above all, you hold on to hope. Take a deep breath in and out. One more deep breath in. And out. Gently reawaken your body. Move your hands. 
Move your feet. Slide your head to the left. Back to center. To the right. And back to center. And when you are ready, please reawaken, open your eyes, and join us to this present moment. Sorry. So I hope that you attempted that experience. If you did and you want to share how that felt in the chat, feel free to do so. The idea is that you might feel calm. Some people say sleepy. That's absolutely normal when you're in such a calm space. Um, before I end, I do want to do one more activity with you all. If we can try it, it is virtual. So I don't know if 100% this will work the same, but with, at the school I work in, it's really fun because I gather my students in a circle and we start practicing some mindfulness techniques. And I like to introduce and use different sounds. So if you can see here, it's a small one, but it is, um, oh, what do you call it? It's a Tibet. Tibet, I can't even say that right, Tibetan, um, uh, what do you call it, like um, instrument, but it's really, really cool because even though it seems so small and little, it can make a really loud and impacting and lasting sound. So I want to go through and try that with you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen specifically, and maybe you guys can actually like see what I'm doing. I don't know if that's a possibility, but we're going to try it. Um, and I'll lower my, um, what you might call it? Because right now I only see one person. <laughs> and it's not myself. So we'll go back to, let's see. I'll just go back to sharing my screen. Keep it like that. We see you nice and big. Oh, so, you can. Uh, yes. So, yes, we see you as a presenter. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to lower my um, screen just a little bit so you could kind of see this. So usually when I'm in a room, what I do is we're so used to listening and hearing for noise, but today I want you to basically listen until it is silent. So I hope you can see it okay. I think you can. So I'm gonna try it, see if this works. Let me try it again. Sorry. It's hard to make it sound loud enough. So the idea is if I had a better surface, everybody, it wouldn't keep spitting and you can actually just wait and need to be a complete silence. I have one more instrument that I'll show you really quickly, but these um, little drum sets have different, um, like they make different sounds. So you may resonate with one more than another. If you know anything about music, it's used on different keys. So sometimes it's like on C, G, whatever the case is. So I always just make sure when I ever go into a store like that, that I wanna find something musical to help me be calm and relaxed that it does suit my personal taste in it. So you, they're really cool because you can um, you know, tinker with all of them. Um, but I just have one more instrument that I'd like to show you. And this one's pretty cool because if you imagine like the drum, um, you can basically play to your own tune. Um, and the kids really like this one. This is like another drum. Um, but each of these little things makes a different sound. And so you could play it with your hands or some of them bring um, like the little kind of like little drumsticks almost. So just really quickly, you could do the same thing like listen for silence um, or you can just play different sounds. Like 
that note for me, this one, like I personally resonate with that one. So that would be a major sound that I would use. And there's another one that it doesn't go well with me. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really use that one. But these are all different techniques and tools that you can use to help yourself relax or just help yourself get into a, a different mood, a better space. And the guided mediation that I showed you, you can actually go online in YouTube and type guided imagery, guided meditation. Now you're gonna have to find a speaker that flows with you because some speak too fast and I don't like that. So you are more than welcome to explore that. I can also share my PowerPoint with Mr. Alvarez so that you guys can have access to some of those other um, techniques that I have there for you. So thank you, and I'm going to pass it back. Thank you so much, Ms. Denise Cervera. We love to have you, no matter how many meditation um, walks you take us through, every single time it's a new experience for me. And I, and I speak from the chat, a lot of people were very in awe um, of how relaxed they were um, and how relaxing it was. Um, and thank you so much for the calming sounds as well. We appreciate you every time that we have something supporting us and our students at Colton High School. School. Um, soon we'll have your Alice Bernie kids coming up <laughs> um, to Coton Middle and then Coton High. And it's so nice to always uh, be able to bridge that with our supportive staff. Thank you so much. On behalf of Colton High School's um, Wellness Club, we would like to give you the certificate in recognition of uh, your presence today, but more than anything of the techniques that you've demonstrated in help in helping our youth um, to come come back and get a little grounded when we're stressing and when things are going on. So thank you very, very much on behalf of all of us. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, continue to support our students like we always do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You did have a couple questions on the on the chat. Um, I think someone wanted to know the name of the bowl and the instruments. That way, um, they can probably purchase later. But I'll hand over the mic to Mr. Alvarez once again. Thank you so much, Ms. Denise. And Denise will stay with us on the chat. If you have any questions, any positive affirmation you want to send her way, any positive energy, uh, she'll be on the chat. So she's staying with us. Also. Um, I know we're coming to uh, 604, so we have two sessions uh, at this time. One is in Spanish, and I'm putting all the information on the chat for everyone. So if you want to join there, and if we can please have one mental health intern follow that link uh, to the Spanish session, I would appreciate that and provide support to parents. Uh, we'll, we'll probably need somebody bilingual. Um, so the link to Alejandra's session is tinyurl.com. Um, forward slash Ale de la Torre, and that's how you get there. Um, that is the Spanish session, and Leslie Maldonado, which is one of the managers at the mental health department, will be there. She is bilingual. Um, again, once again, if you are a Spanish speaking parent, please move over to the link I just posted on the chat, uh, and then Alejandra is waiting for you there for the Spanish session, and then please come back over here after she'll do the same thing again in English. For the rest of us, um, she will be coming back, like I said, right after the Spanish session, so we will not miss any information, okay? Uh, apoyando a su estudiante va a ser en otro link, el que está en la pantalla ahorita, okay? Y también está en el chat. El link es tinyurl.com forward slash Alejandra de la Torre. Y el password para el evento está ahí. Lo puedo copiar y seguir ahí para uh, platicar con Alejandra sobre cómo ayudar a su estudiante. And once again, uh, she'll be back with us right after her session in Spanish. But with us right now, we have our next presentation. And if Georgina is still here, uh, Georgina, are you there? Georgina, our host for the evening. She is muted. Okay. Well, we'll wait for Georgina for a quick second while we introduce our next session. All right, we might have lost Georgina. So um, there you are. Awesome. Take it away, Georgina. 
Hi, thank you, Denise. Okay, so next up we have um, Cecilia and Lakin, our CJUSD mental health department. Um, they're going to be talking about self care and our fortune teller. Sorry, I was. Uh, uh... All right, so we'll go ahead and, and get started, I think. Um, so hello, good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to um, be here. Um, I think Lincoln will be sharing um, our PowerPoint in just a little, um, but I'll go ahead and introduce um, myself and Lincoln. So yeah, as, as we mentioned, um, my name is Cecilia and Uribe, and I am a mental health intern at um, Colton Unified School District's mental health and behavioral program. Um, and we have Lakin as well that's going to be helping out. Um, I'm not sure if she's able to um, load her presentation so that we can all see. I think she's out perfect. Hi, everyone. Our presentation is loading. Thank you for being patient. Yeah, I, I can see it. Just can everybody, we see our presentation. I can't see everybody. So, terrific. Yes, we could see it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just, yeah, we're so today we'll be doing our self care fortune teller um, that I've heard a lot of you are very excited about. So, we're excited to be able to, um, to do this today. So, we can go to the next slide. We can go to the next slide. It's going to show us how to get started. I think we're having some, but that's okay. Well, um, the next slide was just showing us some of the supplies that we need to get started. So um, I know some of you might already have your supplies, and that's perfect um, because uh, for those of you that are ready, we do have some information um, right now that. You know, we're going to have a question about later for a chance to win a gift card. Um, but for those that don't have your supplies for a fortune teller, um, that is okay. You have us an opportunity right now to go grab that. Um, so that is that would be just um, a blank piece of paper like this. I have mine ready. Um, some scissors and a pen or a pencil and some markers. Um, so I don't know, Lakin, if you can um, if you can move on to the next few slides. So we can get started. Okay. Can you see our next slide, slide three? I cannot. Okay. Can anyone else see? Um, it says types of self care. It's showing up on my screen. No, I cannot. Okay. We still see the first okay. slide. If you click on the screen, I think uh, it'll move forward. Okay. I'm clicking on slide three. I'm sorry, it's showing up on my screen. I can try and share um, mine later. Um, well, just for the sake of time, I don't want to keep um, you all waiting. I know you're excited to start it. So um, I'll kind of go based off of what we had prepared for you. And then maybe once Lakin gets to her part, I can try and share my screen. Um, but just um, to kind of get us started is, you know, we're talking about self-care fortune teller. So. Um, this is a very unique kind of fortune teller. Maybe you were thinking, you know, like a fortune teller. Oh, perfect. Yes, that's the slide that we were. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, we're going to be talking today about, you know, self-care. Um, like, what is it and why is it important? Because that's kind of what our, our little fortune teller is going to be focused on. We're going to have, you know, our ideas in there. Um, it's going to be a little different. Not necessarily, you know, a fortune teller, you might have been thinking, oh, maybe it can help me. You know, predict, um, you know, what's, what's the weather like going to be like? Or is my team going to win next week? And I mean, that's all great. I'd love to know that. And if I could help you figure that out, I would love it. But this one's a little different. This one's about specifically your self care. Um, and so, what is self care? I like to um, 
have like a basic, you know, simple definition of it because there's lots of different, you know, ideas or about what it is. Um, but what I think of it is I think of pretty much, you know, things that help us activities um, that can help us to, um, you know, take care of ourselves. So it's the act of caring for yourself and caring for your different needs for your mind, for your health, for your body. Um, and so it can involve lots of different things. It looks very different um, for different people, but, um, you know, as you can see on your screen here, there are different types of self care that we can, we can participate in. And I know earlier in the game show, we, we kind of touched on, on one of the questions was about self care. Um, so there's physical self care, there's emotional self care, social self care and spiritual self care as well. So there's four types on here that I, that we listed. Um, and that's something important for you to note for later too. Um, so why is it important? You know, why are we, why are we talking about this today? Um, and today we're talking about wellness, right? This is the wellness fair. And so self care is important because it is, you know, when we're able to take some time for ourselves to engage in these activities that, you know, help us, they increase our, they help with our wellness, with our, our mood, you know, helping us boost our mood, helping us reduce our stress. You know, maybe we were talking about that earlier too, about sometimes we might be stressed about a test that's coming up or, you know, lots of assignments that sometimes, especially in high school, things pick up, right? And we're starting to feel, if you overwhelmed or, you know, with the pandemic where now we're, um, maybe we're feeling a little bit more isolated from our friends and from, you know, our teachers and you know, how we used to be, you know, interacting with people before. So that's why it's important for us to take some time and to think about, you know, what are some of these things on here that maybe we might need to start incorporating into our day or our week. And then Lakin is gonna help us come up with some ideas on, you know, what does that look like for, for you for engaging in self-care? So go ahead, Lakin. Okay, so Cecilia just told you about the four different types of self-care. I'm gonna go into more tangible examples and ideas of what self-care can look like. So the first one that catches my eye is the comfort food. That looks like a big bowl of warm macaroni and cheese. Food can be very comforting, right? The smell, maybe a memory, the taste, it can make us feel good. Another form of self-care can be writing or drawing. We can write a letter to a friend, draw a card or a picture for someone. Um, looking up funny memes, and if you're feeling social enough, maybe send that funny meme to a friend or a family member. Oh, this one's really interesting. So making something without caring if it's good or not. I think a lot of us have probably taken up new hobbies or new crafts, doing um, DIY projects or crocheting, sewing, making puzzles, things like that. So anything like that can be considered self-care as well. You can make your bed, put some fresh sheets and fluffy pillows on there. Um, drink cocoa by the fireplace. This is perfect weather for drinking hot cocoa or maybe even some warm chamomile tea. That could be super calming as well. Um, having a good cry. Let's face it. Sometimes you just need to cry it out, right? So crying can be self-care as kind of funny as that sounds. Um, this last example that I wanted to share with you guys, I thought was really interesting. Folding laundry. So repetition and productivity can create a sense of calmness. We're keeping our hands and our minds busy, and it's giving us comfort and making us feel more in control. And then bonus, we're getting our laundry folded and out of the way. So it's like a two for one, right? Okay. So we've talked enough for the time being. Now it's your turn. We want to hear your guys' idea of self-care. So if you could please, 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 our lovely participants, Type your ideas in the chat and let us know what you think. We'll give you guys a minute to do that. Oh, nice. Okay, Alondra said working out. I've been working out for the past four months. 
Awesome. Painting, scrapbooking, praying. Okay. Prayer is super helpful for some folks for self-care. What else? Drawing. Caitlin said doing makeup. Brandon said lifting weights. Grace said listening to music. Oh, maybe doing Zumba. Reading, meditation, playing piano. Perfect. You guys, these are all terrific examples of self-care. And everybody has a different idea of self-care, right? For some folks, that may look like running five miles or going to the gym for two hours. And for other people, that may be indulging in a warm bubble bath with some candles and calming music. So everyone has different needs, and that's okay. Listening to music. Oh, using a cricket. Yeah, that's super artsy and using your hands, keeping your hands busy. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your ideas with us. So keep these in mind because you're going to need them later for our activity. Okay, so this is the side you've all been waiting for. This is the fortune teller. Um, unfortunately, we are not going to be doing tarot card reading and, and you know, uh, getting our crystal ball and <laughs> telling everybody's fortunes. Um, I'm sure a handful of you high school and middle school, even elementary school students have made one of these before. In fact, I'm willing to bet you guys are the experts here and could teach Cecilia and I a thing or two because we were a little rusty in making these, but um, this is a fortune teller. This is what it looks like. And really quick, I just wanna go over it with you for those folks who haven't made one or used one before. Um, this is what it looks like. I have colors right here. So really quick, I'm gonna choose blue, B-L-U-E. Okay, I'm gonna choose number three. One, two, three. And I'm gonna choose number five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna choose number eight. Okay, and it says go for a walk. I put my self-care ideas in here, go for a walk. So that's what I would do. Now we are going to get on to the lesson. And you guys are going to find out how to make the fortune teller origami. Okay, so for um, now, yeah, it's time to make our fortune teller and we found a good video that's pretty good and concise and did a way better job of explaining the steps than probably I could just so that, you know, you don't get confused, but um, we'll be playing um, the video and we'll be doing it. I'll be making one too um, along the way. And we'll be pausing the video on a couple um, spots just to make sure that everybody has a chance to catch up. Um, and I'll be, like I said, making mine. So if anybody wants to refer to like what mine looks like along the way, if that's helpful. Um, but yeah, let's get started because I really want to make mine. I mean, it just takes a couple seconds to get it going. Okay. Do we have sound again? Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see. We can, can see, see the, like, video. the video. It's visible. Video? We can see it. Okay. Can we hear the video? No. Okay. A pair of scissors. Now you're gonna start off with a square piece of paper, but if you're like me and you have this rectangular sheet of paper, you're gonna turn it, turn it into a square. So what you wanna do is bring the corner down and line this side up, put a crease in it just like that. And then you're going to trim off this excess piece right here, and then you will have a square sheet of paper. So I'm just going to use the scissors to cut off this excess little rectangular piece right over here. And take a look, I now have a square sheet of paper. So you're going to start off by folding one corner. Okay, so I'm cutting mine. Let's see, even I'm kind of falling behind here. But um, we're pausing it just to make sure everybody has a chance to um, get that step. So that's kind of what it should look like right now. 
So you, now it looks like a square, not like a rectangle. And it has a crease down the middle. And um, we're about to do um, another fold right now. So hopefully everybody's kind of caught up. So we can go ahead. I think the sound went out a little bit again, but he basically just folded it in half once again. The other direction. So it should look like a triangle like this. The sound, I think, Lake, and I don't know if you can. This is what it should look like. I don't know if you guys can see at least my screen as well. I think the sound went out, but now we have this shape like this, and it kind of goes up like this. So now we're folding what he's doing, and he's just folding it um, each corner into the middle. So you'll do that with each corner until you do um, four of the corners. Set a point just like that. Give it a nice crease once again. And last but not least, I'm going to take this corner right over here. Center point, just like that. Give it a nice crease. So now you can see that we have all four corners folded in, okay? And it looks sort of like a square. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually. Perfect. So we're just pausing it one more time to make sure everybody had a chance to make all their folds. So now it should look like um, like this, where there's um, triangle flaps, and there's you know, four of them, like so. I think, hopefully, I don't know if anybody, anybody starts falling up behind, let us know, but um, this is what it should look like. Maybe you guys are ahead of me. Maybe you're faster, go ahead. Flip it over, okay? So now we have a nice flat, flat, uh, smooth piece of paper right here. You wanna take each of these corners and fold them into the center. So I'm gonna take this corner, fold it in to match up with the center, you're going to have to use a little bit of force to get it folded nicely and then give it a nice crease just like that. Turn it, get the next corner, fold it in, allow it to match up with the center. Once again, you have to use a little bit of force to get it folded nicely, give it a crease. Next corner, bring it to the center, just like that, give it a nice crease. And last but not least, you want to take this corner, bring it into the center, and fold it to give it a nice crease. So now we have this smaller, much smaller piece of folded paper. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take- okay, We're pausing it one last time here. So we're almost towards the end and we're almost about to like fully make our fortune teller. Um, but this is the part where we're gonna start, like we need to um, take out our pen and crayon or markers and pencil so that we can add our ideas on here and kind of like how Lakin was showing us earlier um, at everything. And so by now you should have um, two sides to this where one side, I don't know if you can see, one side has square flaps, four of them, and then the other side has triangle flaps on them. So starting with the side that has the square flaps, that is where we're going to, um, if you have markers, you can put um, a color in each square, a different color, or you can, yes, or you can write the name of the color, like Lakin is showing us right there on her screen. Um, yeah, perfect. She has like blue, she has green, I can't see the other colors, but it's all different. And then on the other side, it has the triangle flaps. And you can see it has, um, there's eight smaller triangles like that. And she has a number. So go ahead and add one through eight for each triangle. And that should pretty quick, should take a couple seconds. The fun part here is when we go inside of the triangle flap, we have um, space to write in our ideas. And you guys had some wonderful ideas earlier of, you know, what you're already doing for self-care. Um, so Lakin is showing us how she has her ideas there. There should be eight ideas. So each number corresponds to an idea, like listening to music, um, you know, working out, reading a book, taking a walk, whatever it is that you 
enjoy doing and that, you know, if you were to open it and use it, you'd be like really excited to, to, to do it. So go ahead and just take a couple more seconds to do that just for the sake of time, you know, we're going to start finishing it up. Um, you can always come back and add to it later, but that's pretty much the idea of how we're going to set it up so that we can finish holding it right now. So we can go ahead. Take the sides, we want to fold it in half, side to side, and then unfold it. We just really want to get those creases reinforced, just like that. Turn it around, fold it, just like that. You really want to get those creases reinforced because then it's going to make it easy to actually uh, to actually use it. So now we're going, to, we're going to basically take this side, which is the side that has all these folds that we can see, and we're going to try and bend it upwards like this. So put your fingers like this and then bring it in like that because what you need is you need your fingers to go into these little pieces right over here. Let's, let's try that one more time. Bring it up and in like that, and then you wanna get your fingers in these pockets right here, just like that. So I put my fingers in these pockets, and I'm gonna get the other side, open up the pockets, put my fingers in those pockets, and voila, we have made a fortune teller out of paper. And now you can draw on it, you can color it, make it look good, and write different things inside of the flap. And to use it, you're basically just manipulating your fingers like that. And it's lit. Perfect. So you get the idea um, we kind of shared with you. Um, so hopefully it looks like this. I know when I hit it the first few times, I could not get it to look like this. It took me a couple tries to get my fingers in. Um, but maybe it was easier for you all. Um, so hopefully, you all enjoyed making those. I've made like probably five or six <laughs> in the last week. Um, they're really fun to make and you know, you can add in your ideas. I think we can go to um, the next slide. I know um, we have another presentation coming up, so I don't want to take up too much time, but I don't know if anybody has any questions for us or anything, you know, type them in the chat. Um, you can go ahead and do that, or if you have any comments. Uh, Cecilia, I'm sorry, was, was there a raffle during this session? I was uh, also assisting the other parents. Did anybody catch the name of the winner? Oh, sorry, we haven't done it yet. Um, but you're talking about for the, yes, we're about to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. So yeah, perfect segue. So we do have an opportunity for um, to win a gift card right now. So I know earlier, um, I don't know if you caught it when I did say that we were going to have, um, I was going over something and I was like, pay attention to this because you might ask. Um, but the question is, and I think they'll also type it in the chat. Um, so the question is earlier, we went over four types of self care. We had a picture. So if you can name two of those types of self care, whoever's first and gets it right, gets a chance to win. So hopefully you had a this is for four types. There was a picture and there was four main types. If you can name two at least. Let's see. If anybody has got it. Oh, I think we got, let me see. Let me look at it. Is that even? Eliza Day? Yeah, I think we have. Yes, Eliza answered physical and mental. Okay. Let's go, let me see. Oops, I lost my screen here. Eliza, can you put your email in the chat, please? So we can uh, send you instructions on how to pick up your $5 Starbucks gift card. And this is donated by the students from Colton High School. Uh, so it's a small recognition and a small sign of gratitude for your attendance today. Um, but it's given to you with much love from the students from our school. But please put your email on there so we can send you instructions on how to claim your award. Awesome. Congratulations. And thank you all for participating, giving your ideas in the chat, and just being a attentive audience. There's our information there. If you have any questions or you want to reach out to us. Um, yeah, like, I don't know if you wanted to add anything. 
I just wanted to say great job, All Eliza, day. and thank you so much for everyone that joined us. It means a lot, and we're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us. All right, Eliza, we still haven't gotten your email, but please don't forget to put it in the chat, and the wellness fair continues. Uh, give me one second uh, so we can introduce our next session and thank our presenters from this session. All right, so Ms. Frigo, so are, are you still there? Are you still here with us? I am, I'm here. Sorry about that. My headset. All right, let's give you to please uh, thank uh, our participants and uh, also our last presenter. I'm going to go ahead and display their certificates on the screen. Thank you so much, Lankin and Cecile. I missed your presentation. I was over in Ms. De La Torre's presentation, but I all three of you, Ms. De La Torre, uh, all the time that I listen to you speak to the parents, it's so amazing. Um, as I was introducing um, to the students, each one of the different things we laughed because a student asked, is there going to be an actual fortune teller there? <laughs> um, <laughs> And so it was very funny to me um, that we did put a little description on it. And so I had an opportunity to discuss to them that this fortune teller was going to tell them ways of them doing self care. And um, it was really nice to be able to see um, how you guided them with the video as well that I could take from and use later at the Career Center and with the Wellness Club as an activity. Thank you so much for that resource. And for Ms. Alejandra de la Torre, like I mentioned, um, we, I, I can't thank you enough for providing the parents that um, those resources that are so valuable um, that we need to power with our youth and not power over our youth. So important. I am every time that I hear that, uh, it's a key. Uh, knowledge that our, our parents need to hear and that we need to be there for our students. We want to recognize um, Lankin, Beltran, and Cecilia Uribe with these certificates and with all of our gratitude for coming today um, and sharing your resources. And as well as I think we have one for you, también, Alejandra de la Torre, <laughs> um, even though it's not on here. Um, thank but you, from no all worries. of our heart, thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day. I, I bring it over to you. Are you still here, Mr. Alvarez? Or did you go back to the main room? I'm not quite sure, but I know that we're going to move on to the English session uh, with Ms. De La Torre. Um, so she's going to be presenting one more time in English, this time for English speakers. So we're so, so excited to uh, hear from you and giving us suggestions on parenting. Um, so go ahead, Mr. Alvarez. I'm taking over here. <laughs> no, no, please. Can y'all hear me? We we can now. <laughs> oh, okay, great. That's finally. Huh? Okay. All right. No, yeah. So thank you so much. And um, just to remind you, Alejandra is doing two sessions. So we want to really thank her for everything she's doing. Uh, we, we're really putting people to work here. So <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, switch over the controls to Alejandra. Um, so Alejandra, you should have now a presentation, right? And thank you everyone for sticking with us. This is the last session of the day, uh, but a very important one because we can work with our kids, but I think we need to work as a tribe. We need to work as a community if we're really going to create this environment for kids so they can feel successful, so they can feel at peace, and they can really um, practice and exhibit wellness uh, in our schools. So thank you so much, Alejandra, uh, for doing this session. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to you now. Of course. It is my pleasure and a privilege to serve this community. I'm glad to be here tonight. 
And so with that, I'm glad we're recording because I tend to record all my meetings and then I post them on the website just for parents to know. And so with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'm so proud that I was able to uh, finalize the first session within the allotted time. I know Mr. Alvarez's voice was in my head. Alejandra, please keep, keep track of time. So I, just, I did it, right, Mr. Alvarez? I'm good. Okay, so can you confirm that you can see my screen, please? Yes? Yes, I can yes, see Yes, I can. Can you see? Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, guys. Okay, well, here we are. I'm here tonight uh, to uh, present ideas to you, to propose ideas that can very well help you to connect with your adolescent child. And we want to connect with them because we love them. And also, we are here because sometimes it seems hard, but it actually isn't. So, here, here we go. My name is Alejandra de la Torre. I'm the Family Engagement Program Manager for the school district. And I've been uh, with Colton School District for the last 27, going on 28 years. On the screen, you have my contact information. If I may be of service to you, if you need additional support for any reason, here I am. And you, we can uh, contact and then make things better. Uh, on the screen, you see something, a poem or a, a, uh, a piece of thought that I found fascinating by Mother Teresa. And it says, you will teach them to fly, but they will not fly your flight. You will teach them to dream, but they will not dream your dream. You will teach them to live, but they will not live your life. Nevertheless, in every flight, in every life, in every dream, the print of the way you taught them will remain. I thought that was beautiful because when we are uh, interacting with our children and they are, they are uh, living, experiencing adolescent time, oh, it seems to be an endless uh, situation. It, it seems to be taxing and challenging, but it's important to keep perspective and to maintain a behavior that tells them, I'm the adult, I'm more experienced, and I can listen, and I can wait for you, and here I am, always. So why am I here today? I sent uh, parents an invitation through QC, email, voice, text, and I also know that our Colton High School uh, friends were very just intentional in promoting this event heavily. And so now I'm curious. So please amuse me and write on the chat what you hope to learn today. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a minute. May you please type on the chat what you would like to learn. I'll be happy to see responses. So are they in the q and chat can we close the q a may i or are we using it we're not using q a ale um okay. but uh people can type in it. yeah somebody's actually typing in right now patience with my child how, how patience to have with my child yes how to I love that. with my team good i love that i think i have ideas for that <laughs> <laughs> one or two all right, anybody else, any topics you would like to have? Anyone else? Evening. She has a lot of information, so she has to be selective about what she can do in the next 20 minutes. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> all we gave her. That's my fault. All right, more are coming in. Such now. an effective timekeeper. <laughs> Balancing work with family. Okay. Finds mm -hmm. to encourage their children to speak. Oh, and to speak openly to them. Okay, motivating teens. Getting them to talk to you. Oh, good. I have ideas. I'm in the right place. Okay. Let them be 15. Let me see. But still prepare them for the life. Okay, good. When they grow up, different ways to. Oh, wow. Okay. Helping them deal with anxiety, dealing with developmental growth. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. I think I have ideas. So let's get to business then. I'm going to start sharing again. And here we are. So now I'm going to tell you 
why I'm here today. So I'm here to offer you practical ideas that can help you support you as a parent and enhance your ability to relate to your child, to nurture your child, to grow closer to your child. And I'm here to listen to you if you want me to, and also respond if you would like me to. So those are my intentions. I'm gonna share with you six ideas, six main ideas. The first one is thinking about roles, uh, reflecting on that, uh, because culturally, there's a tendency to, to see uh, the parent as above or superior to the child and the child down here. But my proposal to you is that we do this because we are on the same level, only playing different roles. So the day we became parents is the day our child arrived. So we are on the same page, but playing different roles. And only when there is a friendship or a relationship will there be a space to connect and to communicate. When we look at someone and we think they're way up high, better or mightier than us, it's not easy to connect. Think of friends. Can you connect with a friend if they think they're better than you? Is that a genuine connection? So since we can agree perhaps if the mics were open that it's hard or impossible to truly relate to someone who is above us then that's something to consider when we think of our teenagers also if we go to sermon litany they disengage with us and they disconnect and it can cause rebellion because we're telling them because we know better what to do how to do it when to do it why not to do it? And that breaks communication. So continuing with the idea of one, roles. Once there is a relationship, you can be an influence. If there's no relationship, you cannot be an influence. Now, just a few seconds to think, well, if I don't really have a relationship with my child right now, and we all humans, all of us need some influence or um, just innately are influenced by something or by someone, then who is it at this point in this moment in time that is an influence in my child's life? And do I like that? Can I trust that influence? And if I cannot trust that influence and if I want to be an influence because I love my child so much, and I have the, their best interest at heart, always, always, then I want to have a relationship with my child so that I can be uninfluenced. I invite you to be genuine and to earn the respect of your child, not to demand it. Respect is something that you earn. Idea number two, time. Time is the best gift. Time to listen to them. Time to talk with them, not at them. Time to walk, time to laugh, time to create, time to grow, time to reflect, time to mature, time to listen. And I have listened there twice. It's not an error, it's intentional because listening is a form of loving someone. When you listen to your child, you love your child. When you don't interrupt your child, you're showing love to your child. When you listen to your child, you're showing respect to your child. So by virtue of your interaction, they may fall in, you, fall in love with you all over again. Remember when they were little and they thought that you could fix anything and everything under the sky? If they fell and were hurt, they came to you. If they didn't know something, they came to you. If they needed uh, an answer for something, they came to you. That's because they were in love with you. But now that they're finding out who they are, how they want to be, uh, what they're good at, what their dreams are, there's this time of adjustment and we can make them fall in love with us all over again. Not force it, but cause it to happen. Idea number three, and we're gonna ask you to give us one of the ideas because you may get a gift card, right, Mr. Alvarez, Mr. Rosso? So pay attention. Okay, 
So idea number three, this life is a life. We all come to life alone and alone we leave. What that tells us is this is our experience. This is our opportunity to grow and show what we have to give, how much we, we're given to the world as we are here. So our children are not our property. Uh, they were given to us. They were entrusted to us to uh, care for them and equip them to be fit for life and to have a good life on their own without needing us. Hopefully wanting us to be part of it, but not living the life they have on our terms because it's theirs. So our children should not be an extension of what we wanted to do, what we wanted to achieve. This is their life and our job is to prepare them for it. Continuing with idea three, this life is theirs. So what we can do is to protect them to protect every stage of their lives, to let them grow, experience, learn, uh, self-discipline, protect their identity and protect their uniqueness. Never compare them to anyone else. That's also a gift. So idea number four, rely on the power of self-discipline. Everyone is born with an anchor, an anchor or a conscience, whatever you want to call it. We are born with an ability to know what's right and what's wrong. And so as long as our children are inspired, inspired, not motivated, and not told, but inspired to find who they are. And as long as they have a focus and an intention to be the best they can be, they will know how to do things better. And this is something we can guide them to achieve. And so here we go. If there's a situation where there's need for correction, it's important to listen, to sit down, to listen, to have a conversation and to listen and to listen again and to then listen to them in terms of what they think should happen in terms of the adjustment and to an agreement. They tend to be extraordinary when it comes to finding a way to have a consequence or an adjustment based on what happened, what was done. And it should come from them because when it's intrinsic, when it comes from within and, and it's not something you impose, the likelihood of good results is really, really high. So we are here to prepare our kids Emphasis on fostering someone who can be intelligent, flexible, open, perceptive, flexible, a lifelong learner, aside from school, learning other things, learning about life, learning about others. And then after school, when they're in the workforce, their adults continue to learn. There's joy in learning. Uh, someone who can have empathy and who can respect themselves and respect others and someone who is understanding and someone who's flexible and flexible and flexible and adaptable. Those qualities will go a long way. Idea number six, shine for your child. Your child is grown. Our children study us. Our children know very well who we are how we are, what we are. And when they see us, our behavior, the way we live our lives and the way we treat them should be in such a way that when they see us, we are the person that comes to mind when they have a question or when they fall or when they know inside that something needs addressing. It should be us who come to mind. And so my invitation to you is that, that you that you be someone that your child wants to be with because they're approaching adulthood. It's fast approaching and they don't need us to, to teach them to talk, to walk, to ride the bike, uh, to be punctual to school, to be responsible. All those things we already did. 
this is a moment of transition. This is a moment of evolving our relationship, our interaction with our child. And so it's important that you shine genuinely so they want to be with you, so they choose to be with you. And so this is what uh, students, young students are saying. Well, we, we want our, our parents, we want our the adults around us to, to make time to talk with us and to listen. Uh, we want to have time to communicate with them without them interrupting what we have to say or without them expressing judgment to what we just what we just said or we want to feel their support uh, and we feel this connection and we feel that the language when they speak to us sometimes is insensitive if they tell us oh you know i'm sad or i miss my friends or i want to go back to school or um, my problem is that uh, my grades are low and we uh, may respond well those are not problems because I need to think of the car payment, the house payment, the blah, 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 the adult problems. Well, we are adults. We have adult responsibilities, adult problems, if you want to call them problems. And same thing for them. Their situations, their conditions, their challenges are according to their stage. And so it's important to, again, go back to the role and think, okay, in the role, this is something that is challenging to them. So it's valuable, it's valid, and we can talk about it. Um, they want us to be real and to not pretend that everything's fine when they know and they feel and they sense and they hear that everything's not fine. Uh, it's a moment to connect with them through that, through us being human be before them, not to burden them too much with our challenges, but to share a little bit because that creates connection. Uh, they don't want us to pretend with them. Um, they want to be able to express their feelings and to not be subjected to gender stereotyping. Um, boys don't cry or don't express that or no. This generation is a generation of humans who don't pay so much attention necessarily to the stereotypes that were um, instilled in us culturally. So it's important to connect with them in that way. It's important to listen. And so here we go. Shine for your child. Prepare your child. Rely on the power of self-discipline. The life they live is theirs. Time is the best gift and the importance of roles. So we're gonna go to, because I'm looking at time and we have five minutes left. I want to thank you for listening and I want to offer my support and my ear if it's needed and also finding ways to support you. Uh, as a school district, we have uh, developed and established means to support our parents and our students. This moment of pandemic has brought up the best and the worst at the same time. We have been creative, we have been adaptable, we have been flexible, we have been taxed with the amount of responsibility that a lot of us hold. Everything with the intention of serving your child and serving you. So if we can help you, we are here. Validate your child, spend time with your child. Help your child realize that you see them as unique and as precious and that you recognize that they're individuals and they uh, have talents and they have a future and they have a present. The present is as important because it is the only thing we have. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go to Reality, because when we share the screen, we stop seeing everything. So I wonder if there are any questions. Um, Mr. Alvarez, Ms. Fregoso, how do we do the raffle? Um, go ahead and ask them the questions that you did in the last round. Okay, we'll good. The chat. All right. Okay, parents. So 
pay attention and get your finger on the chat box because I'm going to ask you the first person to give two of the six ideas that I give wins a prize. We're looking at the chat. Shine, don't compare. Shine, don't compare. Give us two though. Time is a gift in the rules. Okay, so Maria Cardona. Maria, Maria Cardona, Cardona, give us your email. Write it down, Jorge and Elizabeth. You guys humble me. You were you, you were listening. <laughs> Qué bonitos. Love it. Okay. Good. Hmm. Walk. Ay, ay, ay. You guys are beautiful. Okay. So another question. Yes. 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 Hmm. What may I ask? How can you be an influence? What is needed for you to be an influence on your child? Write it in the chat. Connect. Oh, I found it. Connect relationship. Ah. Okay, so Marta Marcias connect with them. Marta Marcias? Okay. Yes. Oh, you, but you know what? Everybody's getting it right. <laughs> I want a thousand gift cards for everybody. <laughs> That's how I feel. We got to become fundraisers at this time. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I, I have a third question. What is a very simple form of love that I emphasize throughout? How can you show love to your child? Oh, wow. Oh, you guys are good listeners. Oh, okay, can you help me? Because you know what, parents? When, when you look, when you go to the chat, it jumps up. And it, oh. Yeah. So you want to know who who gave the right answer first? Is that what you're? Who gave the first listen? Yes. Listening is a form, a, a very simple form of love. And if you give that to your child, they will love you for that. Listen, don't interrupt. Um, so let's see. I want to say hmm, that's kind of hard. I know because you, <laughs> you scroll and it jumps. <laughs> well, I scrolled up and I, the first person to put listen is Grace. Okay. Um, but before her, I see people put give time to your child, shine and don't compare your kids. But that, okay. that was for the last question, right? I love that. Yes, but listen okay. is that. Listen is the best so listen is grace. You know what? The the best gift, uh, aside from prizes and gift cards, is that you were here and, and you're here because you care about your child and you love your child. And it is my sincere hope, it is my sincere wish that after this exchange of ideas, that you're not the same with your child that you are an improved person to your child and for your child and that you are predictable and that you are genuine in your intention to if the relationship is not there then you can build it that's the best news and that's the best message here if you at the moment feel this connection if it's a consistent disconnection or if it's a disconnection here and there Trust and believe that you set the tone and that you can do this. You have to be patient. Things don't happen overnight, but they happen. And love is the key. And a very simple form of love, you already know this, everyone that gets an A, is listen. This is a stage when your child needs to be heard. And if they tell you I'm depressed, if they tell you I'm sad, if they tell you I, I can't do this, it's important to validate it and to then at the right moment, let's go for a walk. Show them by experience and, and give them words of encouragement. And the goal is always not to motivate them, to inspire them. It's two very different things. I invite you to inspire your kids. Don't motivate them, inspire them. 
no one can change if they're not inspired, period. Okay, it's already 7.02. What do we do? Thank you so much, Alejandra. I really appreciate you and the time that you give us. Um, every single year, it just gets better and better. And this year only had 30 minutes. Last year was a full hour, but like <laughs> I said, it just gets better and better every single year. And we hope to continue having you here every single year. Um, I think we're all really appreciative of all your knowledge and, and the time and just the grace that you give us as parents. Um, it's not an easy job. You know, I'm a parent of two and, and you know, some parents have even more and um, it's a challenge every single day, but we, we fight that good fight with our kids. You know, we try to get them uh, to where they need to be so they can be successful in life. So um, thank you so much for what you do. Liz, do you have a, a few words um, to Alejandra and to the parents? I, I know I gave them to her before she started because I had heard her in Spanish and, you know, that's my mother language. So, um, uh, me encanta ir en español and in English. I think I could um, read from the text. Somebody said I can listen to Alejandra de la Torre for hours and I 100% agree um, because it's, it is their golden nuggets that you're sharing with parents that a lot of the times we have to learn from situations that we get ourselves into, um, but getting the insight ahead of time. I have an eight year old and I have a four year old that are going into teenagers like before my eyes. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for this. And thank you for even some of the students that stood on. Um, I do know, I did notice that there were some student emails as participants. Um, they have much to learn about how to deal with their parents and hopefully they could give them some of the techniques they learned today and share those with their parents. Thank you so much. Alejandra from all of our team, um, all of our wellness club. We want to go ahead and um, give this certificate to you and we see you in person. Um, but right now in <laughs> virtually, we want you to um, realize that you are impacting lives and you're inspiring and not motivating. That was great because I'm always talking about motivation, um, but you're a hundred percent right. Um, motivation can happen detached, but when you are connected with somebody, that's inspiration. Love it. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank right, you. right. And do we still have Hunter here? Hunter? Thank you. Hunter, are you still yes, here? Yes, I'm still here. Hey, do you want to invite people to come back tomorrow? We're still not done. We still got two more days. I know. I was going to do the positive note because I know we're still doing it. Give us some grace. Uh, sign us off on a positive note and inviting people to attend the next two days. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, we would like to invite you to come back tomorrow from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for more wellness tips and chances to win. All right. Thank you so much, Hunter.